Hi everyone, it's Sam from Over Renewables and I'm going to show you around our latest project in Bolton. So on the southwest orientation, which is this one here, we've got six Trina 335 watt panels with the Van der Valk bird blocker to stop any pigeons or any other birds, rodents, nesting underneath the panels. A lot of the time we get called out to PV faults. This is one of the first things we check because if there's access to other panels, there is a risk that pigeons or any other rodent has got underneath and damaged the cables. Or if there's a nest underneath, that can cause hot spots underneath the panel, cause it to fail. So these six Trina 335s have Solar Edge optimizers underneath them. So this full solar panel system is part of the Solar Edge kit. This means that each panel will work individually from each other. So say this one gets heavily shaded or excessive bird mess or anything like that and causes issues with this panel, the other panels on this side and the other two on the other side will continue to work to maximum efficiency. We like this sort of system, this Solar Edge system, because it gives the customer a higher level of monitoring as well. So the customer can see exactly how much power this panel is creating, how much this one, this one, all of them. So that means that we can remotely fault find, we can give the customer updates on how the system's doing. We can do everything that we need to do to remotely fault find on the system without ever coming to site. When we do come to site, say this panel had failed, it would probably be just a case of a tower scaffold up rather than paying for this full scaffolding like we've got today. That in itself can pay for the slight increase in cost that Solar Edge costs the customer. So for us, it's absolutely worth looking at a Solar Edge option. So as well as those six panels on the southwest face, we've got these two on the southeast. So here we've got the bird blocker once again, and also we've got Solar Edge on these as well. So the full system is Solar Edge. This is a prime example of when Solar Edge is, is perfect because we can see just here a bit of the shading from this little, this little vent here. So as time goes on and the sun changes position, that shadow of that vent could end up covering the panel or a section of the panel. So when it's solar edged, that means that this panel would decrease in its efficiency because part of it is covered, but this one right next to it will just continue to work to maximum efficiency. So once again, that's just a prime example of how solar edge gets around these sorts of problems. So now we've seen the panels, let's head down to the garage and I'll show you where the inverter and the battery go in. So the battery that we're fitting today is a Sonnen Eco 10. It's got 11 kilowatt hours of storage and it can charge or discharge at 3.3 kilowatts. So I'll show you the bits. The first part is the Sonnen casing. So here we've got a wall plate. So this part will fix the wall first. We've got the actual cabinet itself in this box here, which we'll get unpacked in a minute. We've then got the two battery modules. So these battery modules are five and a half kilowatts each. So 11 kilowatts hours of storage. Then we've got the power unit. So this power unit can charge or discharge the battery at 3.3 kilowatts at any one time. If, for example, the solar is generating two kilowatts, the home is only using one kilowatt, then this will ask the battery to charge up with one kilowatt of power. So if the home is consuming four kilowatts, but the solar is producing two kilowatts, then this power unit will ask the battery to discharge with two kilowatts of power. So this part here is really the brain of the system. All of these components go within the cabinet, so it's just one nice looking flush battery system. So we've got the Sonnen Eco 10 installed now. It's on the wall, it's ready to turn on. I'll just go through a couple of the bits inside before we uh, commission it. So we've got a Cat5 cable from our meter, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, we've then got a hardwired internet cable into the Sonnen. We've then got our mains incoming supply here. So that just comes in and that's the route that the power will take to either charge the battery or discharge it. We've then got the individual batteries plugged in. So these are the power cables for each individual battery. After that, we've got, so we've got one, two of those. And then we've got the data communication from the inverter down to each battery and there's a linking cable that links the two. 
Simple as that. So this is the Sonnen power meter. So the purpose of this is this sends readings down one of those Cat5 cables that goes into the battery about the home's consumption. So the total amount of power the home is either using or exporting back to the grid. And also how much solar the system is generating and it feeds that information back into the battery so that on the customer dashboard, they can monitor how much solar is being produced. So this is the Solar Edge online dashboard. So this is exactly what the customer will see as well. So you can see along the top here, we've got some general information about the system. So we can see that currently the system is producing 1.53 kilowatts of power. So that's right now. We then got energy today. So, so far today, this system has generated five units of power, just over five kilowatt hours. Energy this month, at the minute it's the same because we're in the first month of its life. And same again with the lifetime power, it's rounded it up to 5.1. When we get some more information as this system continues to generate, this graph here will start to show us a nice arc of power. At the minute it's a bit on and off because we've had the system turned on and off whilst we've done some work. But what you'll see when this system's been producing is you'll have this nice arc of power from, from the minute it starts up to the minute it finishes. You can see by putting our little mouse on the screen, it now shows us that at quarter past two this afternoon, it's generating 1.653 kilowatts and, and that, that continues through, throughout the day. We then scroll down, so then we can now compare the generation month to month. If we had fitted a Modbus on this system, which we haven't because we've got a battery, then it would also show us the consumption, the import, the export. So you can do loads of stuff with this dashboard. Sonnen itself will show us all that information. So we don't tend to include a Modbus on a system that's got a Sonnen because the Sonnen dashboard is so comprehensive with what it shows us how the home uses power. So then my favorite part about the Solar Edge dashboard is the layout. So now we're on the, the layout. So you can see exactly what each panel has generated today. So you can see that these on the southwest have generated slightly more than these on the southeast, and that's just down to the orientation of the panels. If we were to change this screen to the monthly tab in a month's time, it would then give us the amount that these panels have generated that month. So the reason that that's handy is that, say for example, these two here, which are a slight, slightly different, but only in watt hours, not kilowatt hours. If this panel here was a really dark blue and this one was the same color it is now and there was a huge discrepancy between the amount that it generated and the first thing we'd, we'd ask the customer to do is right go and have a look is there a reason why that panel to you looks like it's under generated so that might be you know, excessive bird mess or the panel's been damaged you know been smashed for whatever reason that would be the first thing we'd ask and then if there looked to be nothing wrong with the panel visually what we can do is we can dive into more in-depth uh, information and actually see what is happening with this panel. So we can see the voltage going into the Solar Edge Optimizer, the voltage going out of the Solar Edge Optimizer, and loads more information about how this panel is operating. So that in itself is a really good troubleshooting and fault finding tool for us as installers, but also for customers. They don't have to pay to get a scaffold put up, they don't have to pay for us to come out and do some fault finding. When we come out, we can have everything that we need to actually fix this panel or have a lot of the materials that it could be. It really narrows down what the problems could be with this panel. So that in itself is a real cost saving for the customer in the future. The other benefit of having a solar edge system and having this level of monitoring is that if we need to seek advice from solar edge themselves, we can give them your system serial number they can look into it and come back to us with likely causes. And this is all happening behind the scenes. You're not having a scaffold put up or anything. So that's the system complete now. So the main part is we've got power here. So in here, we've got the circuit for the solar, the circuit for the battery, and the circuit for this little power meter here, which I explained before. Once it leaves there for the solar side, leaves that circuit, goes into this local isolation, this rotary isolator, then via this generation meter, which gives the customer a total number of kilowatt hours that their system has produced since it was installed. And then from there into the actual inverter itself. This cable here provides the route for the solar power to come back into this system and then back into the house from there. So 
We've then got, from the roof, we've got the DC cables come into this, another local isolation point, and then into the inverter. So this brings the energy from the roof that the solar panels is creating, gives it to the inverter. The inverter then creates the DC current into AC and puts that into a house. This little cable here is a, a data cable. So this is what is providing the solar edge inverter with an internet connection. You can see here the little LEDs, the green light, solid green light means we're producing power and the blue light means that we're online. If we saw a red light here, that would mean that there's a fault with the system. So that's the solar side sorted. From the battery circuit, we've got a supply out of there into a, another local isolation for the battery. Out of there, it goes up, round, and down this piece of trunking here into the Eco 10. That cable provides the battery with its route to send the power back into the system when there's not enough solar power to run the home. When there is enough solar power to run the home, and in fact there's a surplus amount of solar power, that is also the route that the battery takes to charge itself as well. That power cable is, is almost like a two-way cable. From there as well, we've got an internet cable which comes from our little network switch that we've installed here. So that network cable comes down and into the battery, a hardwired internet. The last cable from here is back into here, and that's another data cable. And that data cable connects to this power meter and gives the battery the information that the power meter retrieves from what the solar is producing and what the home is consuming. The last part is just our little socket here that we've put in to power our, our network switch. So now that this system's complete and this home has got solar and a battery, what this home is now able to do is it's able to produce its own power and when it's producing too much of its own power, it can store it for later on in the evening or other high consumption times. This property has also got an electric vehicle, which means that they're on an electric vehicle tariff where they pay a very low rate overnight. So as well as the battery looking to store surplus solar power, it's actually able to charge up overnight during the low tariff period. So for example, from half past 12 to four in the morning, this battery can be set to charge on 4p, 5p, whatever the rate is that's the reduced rate overnight. And those times can be set 24 hours a day depending on what tariff you're on. So during winter time where just naturally we haven't got as much sunlight and it's not as strong, then the battery can be set to charge up overnight and it'll then discharge that cheap electricity into the home for the day. So instead of paying 16, 17p for the power during the day, the home, whilst the battery is discharging, is only actually paying 4p. So that allows the battery to be useful throughout the full year. Thanks very much for watching the video. If you have any questions about this system or any of the other systems that we install, please just get in touch.